a cyclical industry, as we know, so ups and downs are to be expected. What is helping manage those boom and bust cycles is technology. Accenture cites the following top technology trends in oil and gas today. The rise of the cloud-first strategy, which provides greater control and self-service by using applications and analytics and artificial intelligence. The estimates are that in a couple of years, 100% of new apps will be running through the cloud. When you're in this kind of situation, uh, in this case, you may be in an overpressurized event. The last, time you want, the last thing you want to do is put a human in there to actually throw all these valves and such in an overpressure event. Um, and we'd rather, much rather send out the robot to do that type of uh, work. So in addition to the kind of surveys that the robotic systems are providing for us, we're also looking at robotics to offload hazardous uh, activities for us as well. And this, what this allows us to do at the end is then allow our humans, which our humans are still our best asset, to be able to work on the high decision uh, data or high intelligent data sets that we need and be able to let, allow them to concentrate on the key activities of uh, operating our facilities. We recently, in January, completed our first exploration scale ocean bottom node survey. Ocean bottom nodes are a te proven technology in production on, a, on small scale fields. But BHP took it one step further by applying it to exploration seismic, really scaling up the um, remit of the OBN and showing a bold and agile approach to uh, defining our competitive advantage in the Western Gulf of Mexico. The novel approach of this technology to address subsurface imaging challenge in the Western Gulf of Mexico has definitely pushed the envelope in terms of scale, scope, and application. Why precincts? So here's sort of a flow line the way we're thinking it through, is that we think through co-location and partnerships will solve bigger problems and we'll be able to put our significant research uh, effort at the university into larger, more stimulating new research. We'll be able to scale up, hopefully fast, um, our, our effective research. We can have these long-term partnerships with industry, um, internationally and, and, and locally. Um, for our students, it's really important. Students th these days want to see what they're doing. We'll have practical applications. We'll see more, in we believe we'll have more inter internships, more work integrated learning. We're thinking about how engineers need to be retrained. We're going to do a lot of the course development to be around project-based teaching. So rather than go to a lecture and then doing a shoot, start the whole course around a project and be able to work with our industry partners on that. For the second half of our session, we have five Australian innovators that will be presenting their company's capabilities, ingenuity, and original ideas. Each of these companies operate within the energy sector and have used Australia's innovative environment to grow and expand their ideas into successful business models. This group is a great example of Australia's pioneering ways and its constant pursuit to meet the world's future energy needs. Seven oil and gas houses uh, came together with a problem of trying to manage a very large geographical space across WA and NT. Uh, and so relying on community uh, aviation services had its limitations. So in 2010, we came together as an industry and uh, those seven organisations collaborated with us to set up our own uh, WA uh, resources, aeromedical evacuation. We love our acronym, so we call it WARAMI. Uh, and so that program was set up uh, in collaboration with industry. We start off with one aircraft, it's an air ambulance. We now have two based in Karratha in Western Australia. And to date we've um, conducted over 1,000 life-saving aeromedical evacuations using that capability. We're a cloud-based storage solution that allows companies to store all their engineering drawings, data, and documents on our cloud-based structure. We help companies upload their documents and drawings and data from their existing systems onto our cloud-based platform. In so doing, we extract metadata, which drives the search capability. So users can uh, use keywords to search for engineering information. Once they've found that information, they can compare 
the drawing that they're looking at to historical, a historical timeline of previous revisions through scrolling uh, on their screen. Uh, they can view any source file type. So for example, if you had a PDF file or an AutoCAD file, we'll render those files. You can see them without having to have the source software. The modules that we have built into the ICE platform programmatically access the information from that single source of truth, perform the engineering they need to do to inform the engineers of the system response, and return the results back to the database ready for the next module to take over. The advantage here is that each module can trigger its start on the end of the previous module. And so engineering workflows become automated and you can effect change very rapidly. What does this do for you? Well, it reduces the schedule greatly. By up to 70% um, as part of technology qualification process proofs of, of concept with both Chevron and Woodside, that reduces cost, cost in the engineering. But most importantly, it allows you to get early insights into your project where you might not have spent um, enough time or effort in engineering because you were not at that uh, phase of the project, you do the detailed engineering, gain greater insights. More importantly, again, it allows the project to gain, gain a competitive edge. Can we go to market early? Can we secure contracts early? Can we freeze the design earlier? And uh, this is having uh, benefits for both us as a company and our clients. Now everyone and most industries are dealing with the complication or the complexity of digitization and automation. And in fact, a lot of that is based on the modern or the methods that are used today and the technologies that are used today. And we believe that having insights into what's visually happening instantly is going to help improve that. In fact, they reckon around about 45% of most leaks go undetected today. And that's usually based on the method and then also the technology as well. And finally, experts believe that if you can improve the depth and understanding of your, your assets, especially oil and gas pipelines, you can yield around about an estimated 25% net value growth, which is quite big. And we believe that visual insights and automation of these visual insights will help in that process and will play a big role in that process. The idea is to automate the machine learning progress uh, process, provide this rapid scaling, and then prioritise the problems so we know exactly what problems are the most important ones that we need to solve when. Um, and so this is exactly what the VROP platform is doing. Um, and I guess the savings that we're, we're able to achieve doing this are significant. If we look at a, um, an example customer that, that we've um, had on our platform for about six months, which is a national oil and gas customer uh, in Southeast Asia, um, they've had our platform running for four months, uh, and we were fortunate enough that they were willing to actually tell us the savings and describe um, the benefits the platform was, was providing to them. And so in a four-month period on a single offshore platform, they've saved in excess of $175 million. Um, they've said that because of the data processing capacity, they're actually using 2,000 times less man hours to solve these problems than they traditionally were. Um, and the failure predictions are saving them more than 50% of their maintenance cost.